Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this we're going to be making a tiled campaign map that you might use for wargaming or something similar. So this was a request from Jamie, one of the patrons, and he wanted to make something like this old planetary empire set. He wanted a map where he could just add things in or change things around or even just have one map that's divided up into sections so we can use it for some campaigns that he's playing for wargaming. Now Jamie's at a level where we should be able to go through this relatively quickly and efficiently, but even if you're a beginner to Blender, I've got my screencast keys at the bottom so you can see what I'm doing. For example, I'm just going to delete out that cube. So you can see what I'm doing and go a bit slow if you need to. But this is very beginner friendly. You don't need anything other than stuff that comes with Blender, so it's all free, and Blender does a lot of everything you need for you. Right, let's get started. So we're going to go to Edit and Preferences, and we need to get some extensions. These are like add-on-y type things. Now, the first one you can actually see here, but you're going to type in a.n.t t and you're going to get a n t landscape and you're going to click install we're going to need that this is going to do most of the heavy lifting for us then we're going to come here and if you don't have it already we're going to type in ball and install ball tool once you've got that either it will auto save preferences or click save preferences and then we can just close this so let's shift an a come to mesh and i've got some things you might not have i'll come to that later because it'll be relevant but we're going to use this landscape mesh I'm going to click on that and it's going to just generate us a landscape. Now this is ANT landscape, so another noise tool landscape and it's based off of Blender noise functions and various different data sets you can use. What's really cool about this is it has loads of operator presets already available. For example, I might want, I don't know, a mountain. In fact, that's pretty cool. We might come back to that in a second or a different mountain that's a little bit flatter i'm not really sure i'll call it a mountain or we can have things like a volcano which is pretty awesome so we're just going to pick a generic one i'm going to go for mountain one i thought that was quite nice and we're going to start by setting this to the size we want and i'm going to say we want these tiles to be about an inch so like 25 millimeters and just in case you don't know what i did is i just clicked and dragged down and then you can affect both of them at once and suddenly this looks rubbish because now the noise is too small. So we're just going to up the size of our noise. And it's also not tall enough. It's now lost its height. And we can come down here and we can up our height. But it goes flat. Now this could actually be quite cool for like if you want to have a castle on top of something. And that's because we've got a maximum amount. We can up this height. I'm just going to up that to like 10. So it's way more than we need. And then we can do something like this. Now, as I said, we can bring this down. And again, you get this really cool, like, plateauing effect. Up to you what you want. So, this is looking pretty good. But there is a potential problem if you want this to be perfectly able to join together. And that is that we want all of the edges of our tiles, which are going to be hexagons, to be flat. And at the moment, this is probably going a little bit too far out. Now, we can fix that by using this fall off. Now, at the moment, the fall off level is who? If we put three, then it goes wider. So we maybe want like a 1.5. Yeah, something like that. And I'm probably going to up my height a little bit more. But just fiddle around with this until it works. So there we go. Here's our mountain. Now, it really is just that easy. We just need to now cut this out. Now, for this, we need to actually make this solid. At the moment, it's just a infinitely thin sort of plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to edit this. Now, as soon as you start doing this, you lose the ability to change it. So just be aware of that. Oh, I should probably mention you have this seed value here. So you can change your amount. Of, oh, that one actually might be cooler. And that one. Okay, I'm going to stick with five. But you can always come back to different ones that you've seen before. Yeah, I like that one of five. Let's go back to five. Cool. So... What we need to do is add some thickness to this. So let's click this object. I'm going to hit tab, which brings us into edit mode, though I have an add-on so I can get to my different options. We're going to go to edge mode. For you, you hit tab and you're going to click this button up there. Then we're going to select an edge. And what we want to do is just select all of the edges around the outside. And this could take a while. It's not actually that hard to do in different ways. But what we can do is once we select one of them, we can press Shift and G and say we want to select the amount of faces around the edge. So this is select similar amount of faces around the edge because if I just come in here, that's a face. All of the other edges have, well, two faces, one either side. This one only has one 
face either side. So if I say I want the similar amount of faces around the outside, it's going to select all the similar ones, and I can just press E and extrude this down. Now, this could go at a horrible angle, so I'm going to hit Z to lock it to the Z axis, go to about the thickness I want, something there, and then we just need to connect this together so that we turn this into a solid, basically like it's a giant well, sort of cuboid with this mountain on top. So I'm going to hit F, and we're done. We're pretty good to go. So there we are. Now at this point, we need to cut out our hexagon. These were hexagons, they go together quite nicely without being boring, where a square would be. We could, I mean, we could do this as a square, but it'd probably not look as nice. So we're gonna bring in a hexagon. So we're gonna shift an A, mesh, and we're gonna bring in a cylinder. Now this cylinder's tiny, all the way here, and it has far too many vertices around the edge. We want a hexagon, which has only got six. So let's come to vertices and hit six. I should say, if you don't see this menu, it's just down there, just click and it will get bigger. Then we want our radius to be, well, it's a radius, so half of the size we want this to be, and we wanted this to be 25 millimeters. So I'm gonna put this radius at 12.5. There we go. Now, importantly, I then need to get this to the thickness that we want. So I'm gonna to go to face mode, select this, G and Z, and make sure we've covered everything. Now, at the moment, this is only gonna go as thick as this tile, and actually, if we keep this so that this is always the same every time, it's gonna be easier. So what I'm gonna do is come into here, go into face mode, select that face, just G and Z and bring it down even further. So we can see here now, this will cut out this portion. Now, so I make all of my tiles the same size and thickness, what I can do is select this cylinder, press Shift and G, so we make a duplicate of it, then right click and it goes right back where it was. If I press G, you can see it's on top of each other. And then I can hide that, and I can always bring that back later, so make it visible again, when I want to make another one of these tiles. So let's click, and we're going to use Ball Tool now, which makes this very easy. So we're going to click, Shift click, and I'm going to press Control and hit Asterix, specifically the Multiply version of Asterix, the one that's on your number pad. And you'll see that basically does an intersection boolean. I can click on this and press H. And we've got that good to go. We can just click, File, Export, STL, and then importantly, so that we don't get the other objects, we need to click selection only and export the STL. It's that easy. I'm just gonna cancel that. Now, I'm just gonna delete that out, and once again, you can still bring that cylinder back at any point. And I just wanna mention one thing really quickly, and then we'll get on to how to do many tiles all from one map. If we come into mesh and landscape again, and we come and select one of these lakes, now, what we get here is a lake, but it has a plane on it, which is acting as the water, and this won't print. So just be aware of that. You'd have to do some tricks to select this plane, and then we're just gonna go into face mode, select that face, you'd have to come up for three, and we'd have to extrude this as well, and then Boolean it together with the other bit. But I should say, if you actually delete out that, it makes a really cool mine. So I thought that's quite interesting. Anyway, let's make a series of tiles instead. So once again, ANT landscape. I'm gonna to come to large terrain, something like that. There we go, this will do, and that's pretty cool. I might not want it this extreme, so let's just down the height a little bit. That's probably good. And I can always add buildings and things to this later, but I'll do it after I've made all of the hexagons. Now, to get these hexagons, we need to cut this out. But first of all, we need to add that thickness. So let's come here, tab, go into edge mode. You're gonna come up here and click there. Same tricks, click that edge, shift and G, amount of faces, and then I'm just gonna E, and then bring it quite far down and press Z, and we've got that. Now at the moment, this is all quite bumpy, which is gonna make a really bad face because we're gonna put a face here to make it solid. So what we're actually gonna do is say for all of these to go to the same height. And we can do that actually by scaling everything. So I'm gonna press S to scale, and you can see this scales in every direction. But well, we're gonna press Z, so now it only scales in the Z axis. So you can see what we're doing there. And we're just gonna hit zero to make it scale to zero. And that means it's flat, F, and we're good to go. There we go. Don't worry about this shading being a little bit awful. If it is annoying you, you can click right click and select shade flat 
and that gives a better representation of what this is actually like. It's trying to do a shade smooth and that's causing issues. Okay, so how are we cutting out all of these shapes? Well, we need one more extension. Edit preferences, come to get extensions, and you're gonna type in extra. And I think you'll have an install button for extra mesh objects there. And that's the one we want. If you don't, go to add-ons and type in extra. I think it might already be there and just tick this box here, that one there, okay? Save preferences, and then you're good to go. And when you press Shift and A, Mesh, you're gonna have all of these extra options, and one of those extras, importantly, is Honeycomb. Now, if I zoom in on this, you can probably guess what we're gonna kind of do. We're going to use this to cut out our hexagons. So, firstly, I want the cell diameter to be bigger, okay? You can up that to whatever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to about there. Obviously, this probably needs to be sized up a bit, but whatever. But for demonstration purposes, we'll keep that about here. Okay, so no, maybe a bit bigger than that. Let's go to four. So there we go. Once you've done that, we can add some extra columns. Let's go to there and some extra rows. Let's go to there, that's gonna be our map. Now, the other thing we can do is change our edge width. So I want this to be a bit thinner. Probably about there looks about right. So it's gonna cut out a bit, but it's gonna to fit together very nicely. Let's G and Z that up, so it's all the way up here. Now at this point, we need to give this some thickness. This is gonna be what we're gonna cut from this to make our hexagons. So I'm gonna go once again, tab, and you're gonna go into face mode. So that's tab, and then you're gonna click up here. And we want to make sure everything's selected. It should automatically be, but just hit A to be sure. And then hit E and extrude this down all the way to the bottom if you want. It's probably a good idea to do it all the way down. Tab to come out of edit mode, so you're gonna be in object mode. And one thing we want to check is if all the faces of this are the correct way round, otherwise it will have a problem. Um, Blender has faces or facings for its faces, we call them normals, and it tells Blender what's the inside and the outside of an object. And we can see that really easily if we come up to viewport overlays and click face orientation, and you can see Mine is gone yellow. Now I've set this up to be yellow. Yours will probably be red in color. And if you want to fix this, it's very easy. Tab into any edit mode. So just hit tab, hit A, and then shift and N, and it will recalculate the normals and work everything out. Tab back into object mode, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna turn off that face orientation because if I zoom too far out, it gets a bit buggy. It's actually a bug, it's something else, but I'm not gonna go into that now. Click, shift click, control, and minus. Now you can see here, this is cut out loads and loads of hexagons. I click on that object and click H. And what we need to do is tell Blender, yes, this is what we want, because we're gonna do something else in a second. So we come over here to our modifiers. We've got that here. Yours will look slightly different. Let me just undo an add-on that I've got. So yours will look like this. Modifier list is great, but for this, we'll just keep it simple. I've got a video on modifier list if you want to check it out. And we're just gonna come here and we're going to click and apply it. Once that's done, just tab into vertex mode and then press P and separate by loose parts. Tab back into object mode and now all of these are individual bits. So I'm gonna click that and delete it. And we've got all of our individual different parts. Now at the moment, these are way too thick, look at them. So I'm just gonna select all of them and we're gonna tab into face mode. So tab and you're gonna come up here. And I'm just gonna select each of these faces, clicking the first one and then holding down shift to select all of these. So we can edit multiple objects at the same time. Come here, G, Z, get it to the height we want, somewhere about there, object, and there we go. We're good to go. We've got loads of different hexagons that we can see as where different people own this bit of land. And we can use this for our campaign. Now there are other options for this. Just if I go back a stage to the point where we were here, what we could do instead if we wanted to is come to this face. Once again, G and Z that up. And we could come to this object here. Let me just check the face orientation has been fixed at the point we come back to, yes. Once again, go into edit mode. I'm gonna to come to vertex mode, which is one, shift and Z, select all of these vertices, and then just G and Z these up to like there. 
and then I'll shift and Z select all of these and G and Z these down to somewhere sort of there-ish. So we could always do something like that and then click, shift click and then control and plus and this will join together. Let's just H that and you've got these little hexagons that again you can say who owns what. It's up to you what you like. I like the one with them cut out. So at this point we get a nice map that we can use for our campaigns. I'm just going to redo that so it's the way it originally was. I think it's a little bit nicer to view and I could potentially glue this down on something or keep these separate and do something like respray them to demonstrate who owns which bit. What's really cool about this as well is it's very easy to just come in, select one of these tiles and maybe put some sort of little bits like cubes to represent buildings or a little town to make certain areas more valuable than others. Or I could use that other technique to create a hex that is going to be something like a mine that might be more valuable in the campaign. Anyway, hopefully that's interesting, it gives you some things to play around with, and I just think that ANT Landscapes is a really cool tool, and also that honeycomb mesh is just really handy. I hope to see you in the next video, and have a great day.